All right, ladies and gentlemen, another milestone today. I'm unboxing the Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G. Quite the mouthful, but I think, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the most expensive phone I've ever unboxed. And I guess that it's so much more than a phone, right? But at least Samsung is a little bit more clear that this is a two-in-one. That's what they're going for. So we have these butterfly doors to open the box to... Ooh change the shape of the future. Instead of a rectangle, we're going with a square that can fold up into a rectangle. That is very much a different piece of future. So it's been a while since I've used a true foldable of any kind, but it's important to remember uh, we're out of kind of the first generation prototype stage. This is the third foldable Samsung has officially released. In case you didn't remember, I did order the original Galaxy Fold, but they canceled my order and then decided they didn't want to ship Galaxy Fold to anyone but this one thankfully they are shipping so i finally get to try this form factor whoa there it is unfolded in the box i can kind of already notice a crease which is weird because i haven't even opened it yet but let's take a look at all of the care instruction which i suppose is somewhat important because we want to protect this device it's two thousand dollars do not press the screen or the front camera lens with a hard or sharp object such as a pen or fingernail all right so three generations in finger nails are still a no-go when it comes to Galaxy Fold durability. It's not dust or waterproof. When folding the device, make sure there are no objects such as cards, coins, or keys placed in between the screen. Yeah, come on. We're not that stupid. All right, pulling it out of the box here and... Ooh, wow. Okay. I'm gonna put this box to the side. This automatically out of the box feels pretty heavy, but I like the screen real estate we're working with here. And oh my goodness, there's the giant camera bump on the back I'm just now noticing. And wow, that is a tall, skinny screen on the side there. Man, I can't wait to attempt to boot this thing up. But firstly, let's take off our plastic. Looks like it peels off the front screen first. Then it's going to wrap around to the front. Ooh, take all those warning labels off. Big slab of warnings on the side. And then it peels the plastic off the back. Look at that. So much to wrap around. And here's the device itself. I don't know if it shows up on camera, but yeah, day one, right out of the box, I do notice the crease. It is pretty thick. I'm just hoping that the display itself, when it's on and in use, it's a lot harder to notice. So we've got USB-C on the bottom. Definitely a lot thicker than the Surface Duo, but I'm okay with that. And you absolutely notice the screen protectors that have been applied on the front, which I believe Samsung has said not to remove, but I've seen quite a few YouTubers already remove theirs, and they didn't seem to have that big an issue. That's okay. I think I'm gonna leave mine on because I don't trust myself and I feel like I'm gonna break it. So because the plastic is technically off. I know that the screen is covered in plastic. Um, I want to try to fold this for the first time, so I'm just gonna push in the center a little bit. Ooh, that's weird. Folding a device like that. Wow. Okay. Dang. This is what I mean by TV remote display. In fact, I literally have an old TV remote right here. I think we could compare it to... <laughs> It's like TV remotes in the 20th century, TV remotes in the 21st century. It's all glass, it's all display, and it unfolds into a mini tablet. That's a pretty cool comparison, but man, isn't it odd how bizarrely close these two things are, despite being made by totally different companies? It is, but this is absolutely very, very thick in the folded up configuration, and there's a little wedge in between the two so they don't lie completely flat on the inside. I think that's to help preserve the quality of the foldable screen, but but um, which way should I boot it up? I'm gonna hold the power button here. Should I boot it up on the outside screen or inside? Oh, it's on both. Okay, so we've got visuals on the outside and on the inside. Powered by Android and that crease. Man, I can feel it a little bit with my finger when swiping between the two displays, but this is pretty small for a tablet, I'll be honest. Okay, we're finally up and the screen is taking full advantage of this internal display, but ooh, you know what? I just noticed a little bit of motion and it is absolutely at 120 hertz, which I'm a huge fan of. I'm really happy to see that and the taptics feel pretty good, just entering the Wi-Fi password now and the camera hole looks a little bit bigger than what I'm typically used to seeing in the pictures and ads and stuff. Stuff, they always minimize that camera hole like substantially but then when you see it in person you're like yeah that's a little bit bigger than I thought but that's okay it's not that intrusive and this is definitely a huge leap forward compared to last year's Galaxy Fold with the asymmetrical notch and the giant bezels on the outside display so when I close it up like that um, the display is not oh I just double tap it and there you have it 
TV remote mode and you have this giant bezel on the side and then bit more consistent bezels around that display. But man, is that thin. I, I don't think I've ever used an Android phone with this tall an aspect ratio. And I get that you're really not supposed to use this for major things. You're really supposed to be enjoying the internal display, but still the fact that they made it more usable for people is just kind of like, hmm, that's, <laughs> that's one way to do it. It feels premium though. I'll give it that. Like the sides of the phone feel really, really high quality and the glass feels nice and the hinge is very snappy, which I like. And they're warning me again after I took the plastic off with a boot up screen here saying, before you get started, don't press the screen or the front camera lens with a hard and sharp object. Fingernails are not okay here. All right. My wife cannot use this phone. She has very long, pretty nails and oh boy, the sounds are back. Thanks, Samsung. By the way, we're, we're already getting notifications. I did not sign into Google. I did not sign into Samsung, but it wants to ping me right away. But we have finally booted up to the home screen. So we have that now and boy, do I love 120 hertz. I'm sorry if I've mentioned that before, but using that high refresh rate on a display like this, which can fold up is really nice. And that just makes the external display kind of disappointing because you're looking at it now and it's 60 hertz and okay. How do I turn on do not disturb on this bad boy? Because I don't need to hear sounds for every single notification you think of. It's installing 16 applications from the Google Play Store, despite the fact that I didn't sign in to a Google account, which is kind of weird. But hey, I will give it props that it booted up and started up way, way faster than the Surface Duo did. And it only took a few minutes for me to finally get to the home screen. And there is a plethora of cameras wrapped around this thing. So for one, we have a front facing camera that looks, uh, it's all right. It looks pretty solid. The colors seem a little bit weird for me, but I like the fact that if I want to, I can flip this camera around and then I have ultra wide, I have telephoto and I have standard. So lots of lenses to choose from on the back. And even when I unfold the device, I have an even larger viewing area to work with and a camera on the inside for massive uh, viewfinder when taking selfies, which is cool. Switching between photo modes here, I guess I want to try portrait where it where is portrait why is there no portrait on the front facing camera i feel like this should be a mode i like how there's two different viewing angles for this front facing camera you can do slightly wide or you can punch in by like 0.02x <laughs> for some reason but i'll try to take a picture wow that makes quite a clicking sound. Like I felt the taptic engine go off when I took that picture. Let me see if uh, quality outside of the preview is much better. You know, I'm sorry. I, it's not great. It's a foldable, so I get it. The camera's not really the emphasis and it's amazing that we can stretch an image across a display like this and have it go so far to the edge. And at the same time, when I'm done, I can just wrap it up. Man, that feels weird. That is trippy. That is bizarre, but I'm liking it so far. You know, I'm, I'm still not on the train of like, this is the future of all smartphones and this is what everyone will have one day. But at the same time, when it comes to foldables, I think this is by far the best one. Samsung packed it full of hardware. Let me count for a second. We've got one camera here, three cameras here, and another camera here, which uh, I guess you should expect when paying $2,000 for a phone like this. Obviously, latest generation specs, Snapdragon 865, and of course, a fast charger is included, which I'm happy to see. They don't include headphones, but I think that people who are spending $2,000 on a foldable probably don't need extra headphones anyway. And interesting, they go to the nav buttons by default. So they're assuming you don't want to go with gestures, but I might have to turn that on in settings later. So this is the default configuration for the keyboard when you're typing and stuff. They want you to basically use both your thumbs, but I don't believe there's a way. Maybe you can combine them. I just don't know how yet, but I guess it's kind of comfortable this way. Your thumbs don't have to reach absurdly far. As you guys can tell, I have kind of big hands, so I wouldn't actually mind if the keyboard wanted to combine here a little bit. Oh, here you go. In settings, they let you uh, stretch this out a little bit. Not completely combine them, but oh, here we go. Split keyboard. I want to switch that to standard because my thumbs are big enough. I can ticket. Let me see that now. Oh yeah, see, that's better. That's a bit more, uh, you know, regular tablet like. I don't mind reaching. I don't know why they see that as such a big deal. And you can turn it kind of into really, really skinny laptop mode, I guess, if you want to. Um, but I wanted to just see, oh, okay, so this is cool. I got the base configuration, 256 gigs of storage by default, which it's two grand, so you would hope so. But that's definitely a lot better than a lot of phones these days, which are defaulting to 128. iPhone's still defaulting to 60. 
64, which isn't good. But yeah, this is really interesting. Obviously, if you want to get me to like a device, having 120 hertz on that internal display is a great way of doing it. So by default, I'm just already in love with this internal screen. I can't wait to install a bunch of apps on this thing and start using it long term. But already this size and this uh, compatibility, well, I was going to say portability, but the truth is it is quite thick and long. And I want to just try for a second to put it in my pocket and it, it is narrow. I guess it's not too bad. It's, it's somewhat thick, but the fact that it's skinny helps it fit in my pocket a lot better than the Surface Duo did. And maybe it's just I'm so annoyed and upset most recently off of the Surface Duo because I just finished my rant and now jumping to this it just feels so much better in so many ways that I'm digging it but I got to admit this is pretty impressive that hinge that expansive size on the display inside and the fact that you're able to just wrap that up when you're done with it that's pretty dang cool I wish they went with a more matte finish on the glass on the outside because this is automatically in the first like five minutes of use picking up a ton of fingerprints and it looks way way ugly because of all my greasy fingers but still, this is going to take a lot of experimenting with and losing, using the screen like this is so weird having it be so tall like that. But I absolutely have a lot of testing and impressions to do with Z Fold 2 5G. Let me know what you guys have the most questions about, what you're curious about with a foldable or a phone slash tablet of this form factor. And thank you all for watching. This is your Alpsheep here. I'll see you guys in the next one.